Hi guys, let's uh, learn how to draw an atom and do eight man so we can get the information about the number of subatomic particles. Uh, I'm going to do beryllium. I think I'd like to start with that one. So the first thing I like to do is show you what you would see if you had a periodic table in front of you. So if you were looking at beryllium on the periodic table, you would see all of this information. Um, this shouldn't be anything I have to teach you. And there's a key on the periodic table um, that shows you how to read it. So first, um, we are going to start with 8-man. It's my little uh, acronym that we've always used to count how many subatomic particles there are in the elements. So I'm going to start with, whoops, a little spelling error there. 8-man. A-P-E. M A N. All right, now that you have all this information, we're going to use the information that's on the periodic table and fill out 8 man. So, this number right here, um, that is the atomic number. And I got that number by counting the number of protons. Not me personally, but somebody did. So, I know that the atomic number for beryllium is 4. So, if I'm going to write that number, I'm going to fill out both the A's. That's what the atomic number stands for. All right, and again, we got that number by counting the number of protons. So whatever the atomic number is, that's how many protons it has. Easy. In eighth grade, we talk about stable atoms. What that means is the number of electrons and protons equal each other. So it's a very stable atom. Um, it's not a positive or a negative. Um, so all that information from one number, four pieces of information. Now let's do uh, the mass. The mass is this number right here but we don't use decimals um, for the periodic table. In this case, I want you to round. So what you do is you look at these two numbers right here. And the little rhyme I always learned was, treat it like money. 49 cents or less, leave it at rest. 50 cents or more, add one more. Now, that says decimal zero 01. That's like one cent. So that is definitely less than 50 cents. So I'm going to leave it alone. So when I round, I just write that one number, 9. Now what I'm going to do is a little bit of math, and so 9 minus 4 gives me 5. Done. Kind of neat. Um, it, you can answer any question about the number of subatomic particles. You could fill out the information on how many protons, um, what's the mass number, all of that. Just from doing that little acronym, 8-man, using the periodic table. All right, let's draw it now. Uh, in order to draw it, we are going to first start with the nucleus. And the nucleus is the most dense, and it's where all the mass of an atom is. And inside the nucleus, you've got protons and neutrons. You all heard a little story. Um, if you were uh, in my class, you heard about the Nucleus Arcade, and Patty, Perky Patty Proton hangs out there with Nerdy Nelda Neutron. And they make up the mass of the atom. They both have similar mass, but they make up the mass of an atom. Now I'm going to fill in, fill in how much of each there are. So there's four protons, so I'm going to write that four, and there are five neutrons. Now I do want you guys to see that the number of, uh, the, if you add these two numbers together, four plus five, you get the mass number. That's important because that's where all the mass of an atom is. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to draw the electron cloud. The electron cloud is the cloud outside the nucleus. All right. Now you're probably wondering why did I draw two rings? Well, one of the things I want you to know is if you know what period number which is the side-to-side -side ro uh, rows on the periodic table. If you know the period number of the element you're drawing, you know how many energy levels, that's what these things are called, energy levels, it has. Um, this beryllium happens to have uh, two energy levels because it's in period two. Now we're going to draw it. We're going to draw the electrons. Um, the electrons, I like to draw them in pairs, and remember they are negative. Um, that's this number right here. Please don't get confused and draw the number of neutrons. You already you already listed that one. So the electrons, I like drawing them in pairs, and I like drawing them 
in uh, as negative signs. And the reason I like drawing them as negative signs, it reminds you that they are negative. Now, there is something you guys learned when you drew the energy levels. We fill the energy levels in order um, from closest to the nucleus outward. So the first energy level can only fit two electrons. The second energy level can fit eight electrons, and the third can fit eight. And we always fill in this order. We start, we start at the, the smaller one, and we work our way outwards. Okay, so we've already drawn two of them. We need to draw four. So now all i got to do is just draw two more. And I'm going to do it in the next available level, which is this one right here. But I actually want to make these guys a little bit special. Um, and the reason I do that is because they are a little bit different. These are the valence electrons. So those guys right there are the valence electrons. And valence electrons tell you how reactive an element is. And now you know how many valence electrons beryllium has. Beryllium has two valence electrons. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for now. I hope you now know how to do 8-man and draw a Bohr model for beryllium.